uh, how you can describe using the five senses, adding details. So, uh, great job. Now, um, if in case you're wondering how I'm qualified to be talking about writing, then when I was seven, I published my first book. It's called Flying Fingers, Mastering the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And I used a lot of descriptive writing in my book, and I continue to improve my own descriptive writing techniques by practicing my writing. And then my second book, it's called Dancing Fingers, and it's a book of poetry that I co-authored with my older sister, Adriana. So I really enjoy writing, and I do it in some form on an almost daily basis. And today we're going to be discussing some of the strategies that we can use to make our writing more descriptive and more interesting to our readers as well as ourselves. So why should we write descriptively in the first place? Does anyone want to give some reasons? Why do we write descriptively? Isaac? We write descriptively so um, so people would want um, to read our books and want to know what's happening because they get more description. Right? So people want to read the books, want to know what's happening. Uh, why else would we, might we want to write descriptively? Writing. To communicate with other people. To communicate. Very good. Uh, definitely writing descriptively would help you communicate your ideas or uh, what, what you want the reader to see. And uh, any other reason why we might write descriptively? Todd? Um, um, to make the book interesting. It can make the book interesting, very good. It can make the book more fun to read. Because if you've ever read a book that has no description whatsoever, it can be maybe a little bit confusing. You don't, you have to, you don't know what people look like. You don't know always necessarily where they are or what that place looks like. So yeah, writing descriptively has lots of different purposes. Especially because when we write without description, like in the scenario that I was just saying about a book that had no description whatsoever, then we leave a lot of questions hanging in the air. For instance, take a look at this very not descriptive passage. The creature entered the area. So what are some questions you might have about this sentence? The creature entered the area. Adrian? What is the creature? Very good. Yeah, what is the creature? That's probably the first most obvious question. Because the way it is right now, it could be an elf, or a troll, or a deer, or an armadillo, or a lizard, or a walking detour sign. <laughs> the, the possibilities of creature are fairly endless. And then, uh, what, are, what are some other questions you might have? Um, where, where is the area? Where is the area? What is the area? Exactly. Is it Dallas? Is it Redmond, where I live? Is it New York City? Is it a restaurant? Is it a lodge out in the middle of the woods? It could be practically anywhere. What is the third question you might have? Sarah? Um, how did the creature enter the area? How the creature entered the area, exactly. In the pictures, you might think, well, it's just the creature or the area, but it's also how did the creature enter the area? Uh, did they walk in? Did they get pushed in in a wheelbarrow? So there's all these different possibilities and thus your readers have a lot of questions. When you write something that's really general without giving more specific information, it can be difficult for us as a reader to know exactly what they're talking about. So we can improve the sentence by adding description. What are some things that make writing descriptive? Brett? Using longer words. Using longer words, that's a good one. So not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a longer word, but it could, um, it could be a synonym for a word. So for instance, instead of using big, then you might use something that more accurately describes the size. Like for instance, you might use vast to describe an area that's, that's very wide reaching, that's very large. Um, so maybe choosing synonyms that are a little more specific. Uh, or also replacing some general words like nice Maybe some of you have written, uh, so-and-so is nice, my friend is nice. Writing in which way they were nice, like friendly, um, kind, you know, getting more specific like that, that would be one way of adding description. What's another way of adding description? Um, using vivid verbs. Using vivid words, very good. Uh, word choice is a big part of description, making sure that the words you choose are appropriate and that they're uh, fairly specific. What are some other ways to make writing descriptive? 
I'm making an imagination note. <laughs> yeah, very good. Using your imagination. That's, and I think that that's probably one of the most important things that you can do uh, when you're writing stories and adding description is to use your imagination. Uh, so what what do you see in, in your in your mind? What do you imagine for your story or what you're writing? Um, and and then just sharing that with your reader. So yes, imagine. One of the first steps you can take when you're writing, or if you have something that you've written and you think, well, this isn't very descriptive, is uh, to add details. What are details? Very good, yeah, details are the extra things that you need to know about something. Uh, you could just say something like the creature entered the area, but why just say that? I mean, you could add so many details about what the creature looks like, what kind of creature it is, as we talked about. Uh, so, another, there's a few more reasons to add details. Basically, they make reading more fun, they can give a story life. Before, you might say something like, my sister had a smile on her face, so it gets the point across, your sister was smiling, but you could say something like, my sister smiled like a cunning chihuahua, which <laughs> makes it seem a little bit more maybe frightening or, or humorous for the reader. So adding details like that that um, capture more of the moment, that capture more of the image, can be uh, great for the story. Details make a story unique. Before, you could say something like, my grandmother drove us to the amusement park, the after version. Well, I might think something like, well, a lot of people can get their grandparents or a family member to drive them to the amusement park. What if I said my grandmother drove us to the amusement park in her old Dodge Dart, which smelled like a poodle? Each one of you and your families has something unique, um, something special. So bringing those up when you're adding details can also set your story apart, make it interesting and different. And details make a story exciting. You might say something like, the cat jumped on me. So again, it gets the point across, it's a little bit ordinary. But afterwards you could say something like, the huge hairy cat jumped on me, sinking its claws into my sweater. So you see how there are many reasons why you might want to add details, whether to make it exciting, unique, to give a story life. And uh, so let's practice adding details to some different uh, senses and finding details. Take a look at this picture. So how many different details about the girl can you find? Raise your hand to share different details just looking at her. Bianca. She has blue eyes. Yeah, she has blue eyes. She has blue pink eye. ribbon. What else? David. She, she, her eyes are crossed. Her eyes, yeah, you're right. They're, they're a little bit crossed. They're not like you know, super, super cross, but they're, they're, they're close together, that's true. What else? Um, Erin? She's not smiling, so... Yeah, she's not, she doesn't have like a huge smile that you sometimes do like when someone's taking a photo. She has sort of just a little, you know, the, the face you walk around with normally, probably. What, what other details? Bryson? She's baby. She's a baby, or a bit, yeah, she's a very little child, um, not not your age. What are some other, let's see, how many more details can we get? Okay, Toronto. Her eyebrows, her eyebrows are not big. Her eyebrows. Thin eyebrows. Thin eyebrows, yeah, very thin eyebrows. And is there one more detail? Um, Emily? She has short blonde hair. Short blonde hair, very good. So uh, you guys thought quite a bit. Another thing you could have added maybe would be uh, she she seems to be wearing a lot of pink. She has a pink bow or a ribbon. She has, she's wearing a pink um, thing around her neck or a dress. So yeah, there's a lot of these details that you could probably observe. You could also point out things about her ears or her nose or her face. So yeah, you guys covered most of the <laughs> descriptive details for sure. Let's practice now adding details to our writing. Uh, starting with the tiger yawned. So what more could we add to the tiger yawned? How can we make that a more descriptive sentence? And I'll be typing things up as we go. Isaac? You can say what color was the tiger? Like, how would you write that? How would you change that sentence? Oh. Can I do that? Mm -hmm. so the, the big fluffy... The big fluffy white tiger yawned like it was like it didn't sleep at all. Good job. Good job.
Okay, very good. The big fluffy white tiger yawned like it hadn't slept at all. Great. Um, and if you wanted, you could even go further. You could even add another sentence. That's great. So what about my sister yelled at me? What? Think about what What do your sisters, many of you have sisters who have yelled at you before, what do your sisters look like when they're yelling at you? How do you feel? Hey, Bryson. <laughs> my sister, my, 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 my sister yells at me when I took her cookie once and she got really mad at me, mad at me because of it, because, and she told my mom, and I felt a little bit bad. Okay, so, my sister yelled at me when I took her, what was it? Cookie. Oh, took her cookie, okay. Because <laughs> I didn't, I missed that part. Okay, so my, my sister yelled at me when I took her cookie, and uh, became very angry, and then my, my mom, your mom got mad, right? Yes. Then my mom got mad at me and and I felt bad. Okay, so we could actually maybe put this in two sentences. My sister yelled at me when I when I took her cookie and she became very angry. When my mom found out, oh, she got mad at me and I felt bad. Okay. So how might we add also some descriptive details about uh, appearance? So, for instance, you know, when we said the fluffy white tiger, what, what did your sister look like? Was she really frowning hard? Was she raising her voice? Yeah, she was raising her voice. Okay. Yelled at me loudly. Frowning. A frown on her face when I took her. So, then... When you when you say something like my sister yelled at me loudly, a frown on her face, you can put maybe my sister became very angry and yelled at me loudly, a frown on her face when I took her cookie. When my mom found out, she got mad at me and I felt bad. This sentence might be a little long. So again, as, as you're going through with adding descriptive details, you can uh, you can always um, edit more. You can separate in different sentences. What about I could tell my mom was getting mad. How can you tell that, that someone's mom's getting mad? What are some signs? Okay, her face was getting red as a tomato. I can tell my mom was getting mad. Her face was getting red as a tomato. And her eyebrows, and she was... <laughs> you know when, when someone goes like that, is it, do you call it like knitting there? I, I think that's maybe the term you want to use. Knitting your eyebrows. With the intensity of... Um, I am with the intensity of someone about to crush rocks. Okay, that might be a little dramatic, but, uh, okay, so I can tell my mom's getting mad. Her face was getting red as a tomato, and she was knitting her eyebrows together with the intensity of someone about to crush rocks. So if you're going like that, you're really clenching up. Adding details like this, as you can tell, it makes it, it makes it the story much more interesting. I mean, we don't even really have a story, we're just working from a sentence right here, but it gives that sentence some amount of plot and, and what's happening. We, we went from, my sister yelled at me, we went from my sister yelled at me, to this whole story about stealing a cookie, and then the mom getting mad, and then how you could tell that the mom was getting mad, and it's nice that that worked out to get um, I could tell my mom was getting mad because her face was getting red as a tomato and she was knitting her eyebrows with the intensity of something about to crush rocks. And I think that you can probably agree that, that this image that you get in your head is probably a lot clearer than if I just said I could tell my mom was getting mad. 
And then when we talk here about the tiger, the big fluffy white tiger yawned like it hadn't slept at all, we see the big fluffy white tiger. These descriptive details act kind of like clues for us to be able to visualize the image in our head. When we write descriptively, we add details. We might talk about what things feel like, taste like, smell like, look like, sound like. Um, for instance, when you're working with similes and, me and metaphors, then you probably use those quite a bit to uh, discuss some of these things. For instance, when we said, my mom's face was as red as a tomato, again, that's using a um, figurative language to talk about what something looks like. So we use the five senses quite a bit, whether when we're talking or writing stories, without even thinking about it. What do things feel like? So feel the ground underneath you. What does it feel like? It feels kind of hard. It feels pretty hard. Is it carpet or is it uh, it's car carpet? Okay, so is it sort of rough or is it very soft? It's rough. It's pretty it's rough. Moving rough. Okay. So there, you just you just yeah. described that it feels kind of rough. So when I feel when I feel the floor over here, it feels. Um, well, it's wood, so it, it feels, uh, it gives a little friction on my fingers when I rub it back and forth. A little bit rough as well, and, um, and it's very even, very, uh, very hard. So yeah, those are a few things you might describe just, you know, touching the floor, touching a table. Even if you uh, took a piece of hair, you could feel that. So there are a lot of ways to describe how things feel like. And um, another way that you describe how things feel like would be, of course, how you feel inside. For instance, if your mom's yelling at you, do you feel scared? Do you feel ashamed? Um, so your feelings inside as well. What do things taste like? Um, would anyone like to tell me what is what does their favorite food taste like? So warm cheese. How does how does that taste? Is it uh, does it kind of melt in your mouth? Is it very thick and hard? Is it soft? Does it you know what's the sort of texture? It's pretty soft and melts also. Okay, pretty soft. Great. What do things smell like? Does your classroom or is is this your library actually? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's your library. Okay, that's how I figured it. it looked Okay, so what does your library smell like? Does it have a kind of distinct smell? It smells like books. It smells like books. <laughs> there is actually, yeah, I, I see your point because when we when I go to libraries, you definitely do smell something, and it's and it is kind of like that smell of books. It's kind of when you open up a book and you, and you smell the the new book smell. Maybe it's a little bit of that. What do things look like? Uh, and you would also think about this from different points of view. What does a fish look like from the eye of a cat looking into a fish bowl? I'd be pretty scared if I was that fish, but um, you know about what things look like. What does your library look like? What are some interesting things uh, uh, that you see when you're looking around your life? Okay. It looks like it's a jungle. The it, jungle? It looks like a jungle? So how? How does it look like a jungle? It has stuffed animals everywhere. Very nice. So you, that's a great example of how you can use a simile. My library looks like a jungle because it has stuffed animals everywhere. What are some other things you notice about your library? Okay. Um, it has animals and flowers on the wall. It has animals and flowers on the wall. Right. What do things sound like? What are some sounds that you hear? Uh, I just don't sound like the library. It's very quiet, yes. So if, if an area is very quiet, you might describe that you might say library is very quiet, there's only a few quick whispers here and there, uh, something like that. So how can we revise that creature enter the area sense? How can we make that better? I want to make it.
your makeup where it's entering. I'm sorry, sorry, there's a there's a really large background noise in hello? Yes. Yeah, sorry, there, there's, a, there's a very strong background noise. Um, so, we might describe how um, the, for the creature entered the area, um, who, what kind of creature it is. Like um, the magical unicorn slowly crept through the forest. That's what she wants. She wants you to make it up. Oh, like, okay. Use vivid verbs and adjectives. The magic so unicorn slowly crept through the forest. Right. The magical unicorn slowly crept through the forest. So what else could we what else could we add about that sentence? The magical unicorn. What what can we describe about the unicorn? Isaac. We can describe it pink, big, fluffy, and cute. <laughs> big, big, fluffy, and cute. Okay. So let's let's be cute. Cute, buddy. It's so fluffy. Uh, for it's just despicable fluffy. me. It's not. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that with my sister. Um, okay, so the, the giant, the giant, pink unicorn crept slowly through the forest. Um, it's fluffy and and what was another word? What was another word? after the background noise came on. There was this, it, it used to be absolutely all clear and fine, but then a huge amount of background noise started. Hmm. Is there a way to Yeah, I'm going to redial them. You are the first participant to join the conference. Uh-oh, it seems like it might be their issue then. Another thing is that there was, there was a, um, Odd. There was, there was like, when the background noise started, then suddenly it like switched from the view of the classroom to this woman sitting at a desk, and and so I said hello, and then it suddenly switched back, and then it kept on Let switching. Make sure her mom's not like on Skype or something. No, it's not her. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it was someone. I think maybe the person managing the video conference accidentally oh. switched the feed for. Okay. Because the, they're doing it through a middle, a middle thing. So. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um. Sorry. I I think I've lost the connection with the school. Oh, have you have you lost the connection with the school? I'm not sure exactly what happened. It seems like they just the call just disconnected, and um, yeah, so I'm not sure exactly why. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> but that's kind of interesting. I, I'm waiting to connect in with them from, oh. uh, from Wisconsin, so I'm not right there. So I don't. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. We must have uh, crossed lines here. I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I wish I could help you. I, I saw you come on for a second, and I saw, and I was wondering exactly what was going on. So you're you're trying to connect into the school? Yes, I'm connecting into the school from uh, from Wisconsin for a program at 1:30 on geology. Oh, okay. It must it must be a <laughs> conflict of schedule then because they scheduled this descriptive writing program and then. 
Okay. Uh, I, I guess that I'll just call them up. Um, that would be that would be a good idea. I think the I think the lady's name there is Dorette. Okay. Conti. Great. Yeah, give her, give her a call and she can probably link in with you, okay? Okay, I'll do that. And are you are you talking to the fourth graders? I'm talking to the sixth graders. Were sixth you talking graders. to the fourth, to the fourth graders? graders? Yes, and I'm I'm not sure. I'm hoping that they'll call back and connect, but I'm going to give them a call and see exactly what is going on. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. You were doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Very nice to meet you also. <laughs> Oh my god. 